그럼 말하면 되는 거죠? 행사가 We will be beginning our forum shortly, so please all come inside and take your seats. It's raining outside today, so we are delayed by a few minutes. We will be beginning the forum as soon as our VIPs arrive. Thank you. We will now begin the 2021 UEA Yosu Summit Youth Forum. I am your host for the forum, Park Su Ki, President of Korea Carbon Hunters Association. It's nice to meet you today. Classes are ongoing, but we have many students and teachers from the 11 Jeonnam and Gyeongnam region schools who are here with us, so thank you very much. In this session, we'll be listening to the presentations from 11 youth teams from Jeonnam and Gyeongnam areas under the theme of Acknowledge and Act for Net Zero. Amidst the climate crisis, our future generations, the youth, they will be sharing the ideas that they have developed over the years on this very important issue. So once again, thank you to all our participating students. I would now like to introduce to you our guests. The 2021 UEA Yosu Summit is being hosted by Yosu City. So representing Yosu, we have Mayor Kwon Obong. Next is the chair of this youth forum. We have Chairman Chu Se Yun of the COP28 Attracting Committee. And along with me, we have a representative from the Gyeongnam region who prepared this youth. Uh, he is Jung Myung Hwan, representative of One Inter Korea. First, I would like to invite Mr. Cho Se Yun, co president of COP28 Attracting Committee, for his opening remarks. Let's welcome him with a big round of applause. Nice to meet all of you. As you all know, we are faced with destruction and failure and threats. And there is a lot of failure energy around us. And we tend to try to avoid fear and failures. And what we need to do now is to do away with the language of failure. 
and we need to talk about hope and we need a uh, message that talks about the potential of positive thinking and that is why we are gathered here today. We only have one earth and we have to try to protect what is most precious to us and all of you are gathered to today uh, to talk about this and that in itself is a miracle. Thank you. Next, to congratulate this youth forum, we have Mayor of Yosu, Kwon Obong, who will deliver his remarks. So we will invite uh, the Mayor of Yosu up on the stage. Please welcome him with a warm hand. To the youth participants, who are attending the 2021 UEA Yasu Summit Youth Forum here in this beautiful city of Yasu. I'd like to welcome you all and also welcome to the youths from around the world who are connected online. It's nice to meet you today. I am the mayor of Yasu, Kwon Obong, which is the host of this year's summit. I'd like to begin by thanking Co-President Chu se yun of the COP28 Attracting Committee and to our other guests, President Park Suki of Korea Carbon Hunters Association, who is moderating this session. Thank you very much. And also Representative Chung Myung-hwan of One Inter Korea as well as the youth teams from 11 South Central and South Coastal regions. And to the teachers of the teams, thank you very much and welcome to Yosu. This year's UEA Yosu Summit is an opportunity for over 50 cities from 20 countries to gather and discuss sustainable cities through net zero. In this youth forum, we have 11 youth teams from the South Coastal and Central regions, as well as youth teams from Cambodia and Cameroon, who will be giving presentations going beyond regions and race. We should put our heads together and engage in fruitful discussions for climate crisis and net zero. We need to listen to the concerns and give opportunities to play the role to the younger generations in our in responding to climate change. And this is a very meaningful event in this aspect. The summit is being held amidst COVID-19, but still the passion that you, the youths of tomorrow, are showing will be the foundation for a sustainable future. The Republic of Korea declared 2050 net zero vision last December. Our city also, also committed as a local government to the 2050 Yosu City net zero last April. As a leading city in climate protection, we will do our best to realize the vision of sustainable city through net zero. And at the 2023 UNFCCC COP28 meeting, the whole world will be discussing the way forward in overcoming the climate crisis. So this conference of the parties is called COP28, and Yasu City, as well as 11 other cities and counties in the South Coastal and Central regions in Korea uh, are working to jointly host this event. So we ask the youths here to be interested in this efforts for hosting the event. And you, the youths, are the leaders in the future generations. Your passions and efforts for net zero will be a new hope for humanity as we face and try to overcome the climate crisis. I hope you take back very good and beautiful memories 
with you mm -hmm. from here in Yasu. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, there will be a congratulatory video message by Mr. Yun Won Tae, Secretary General of UEA. Good morning. My name is Yun Won Tae. I'm Secretary General of UEA. I would like to thank everyone who has put together the Youth Forum of 2021 UEA Yosu Summit. Uh, the students and teachers from the 11 cities and counties in Jeonnam and Gyeongnam area. Because of the pandemic, many students are participating online. Nice to meet all of you. Also, I would like to thank Mr. Cho Se Yun, co-president of COP28 Attracting Committee, and also Ms. Park Su Ki, president of Korea Carbon Hunters Association, and Mr. Jung Myung Hwan, uh, permanent representative of One Inter Korea, for working hard to make today's event possible. We have to achieve net zero. Uh, until 2050. And to do that, we have to have commitment and also action. And the damage coming from climate change will be more uh, dire in the future compared to the present. And uh, the future generations will be hardest hit. Thus, we are holding this youth forum and we have invited adolescents from the member cities of UEA and also the 12 uh, cities and counties from southern coastal and central regions of Korea. And we will be sharing information with the international society as well. And I'm sure you remember the UN General Assembly held in 2019 when Greta Thunberg, a youth activist, reprimanded us. And so we are faced with warnings of uh, climate crisis, but we should not stop at just listening to these warnings and we need to work hard to overcome the difficulties. We need to act and we have to work together. We will have presentations by youth today and I hope that your ideas and your voices will be reflected in the Yosu Declaration and so that you will be able to show your commitment and role uh, in our journey towards carbon neutrality. So once again, congratulations on holding the Youth Forum, and I look forward to fruitful results. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary General Yoon. Because of conflicting schedule, um, he had to send in his congratulatory message by video. So we ask you for your understanding. Next, we'd like to introduce to you the presenting and attending teams of this youth forum from Namhae County. First, from Gyeongnam area, we have from Namhae County. The teacher is Pe tae and the leader is No Gyeong Min. The assistant leaders, uh, Kim Tae Young and Park Jong Min. And we have Hwang Harin, Lee Ye Won, Jeon Sang Eun, and Kang Ji Woo from Changsan High School. Next, from Koseong County, teacher Choi sang Chol, leader Jong seung Won, assistant leader Kim Su Ah, Lee yoo Jung, Lee Ji-eun, Choi eun Ah, Choi in so Jung Hee-ju, Jo Jung Un, Kim Hyung Woo, Kim Che yoon Kim Na Hyun, Kang Shin Hye. Next, from Harong County, teacher is Lee Shin Hee, and leader is Kim Hae Young, assistant leader Song Yuna. And the students are Kim Ah Young, Ko Ji Woo, Ho Ye, Kang Seung Ju, and Lee Sun Jin. From Sacheon City, teacher Kim Young Ah, leader Ho Jin Hyuk, assistant leaders Kwon Do Yoon, Jung Ji Hoon. And the members are Shin Hyo Jung, Nam Yoon So, Lee Ho Jun, Kim Dong Kyu, Win Ju Young, Ha Jae Won, Lee Jae Hoon, and Park Ji Sung. Next, from Jinju City, teacher is Kim Jong Hoon, leader Kim Dong Ju, assistant leader Kim Da Eun, and members are Kang In Sung, Lee Ji Ho, Kwon Hyun Woo, Kang Ki Dong, Choi Min Jun, and Jo In Heng. 
the yes so thank you very much students from Gyeongnam next students from Jeonnam Gohun County so the teachers are Yang Junu and Jung Sang Sun and leader is Kim Eun Ji and the members are Ko Ha Eun, Choi In Ho, Kim Kyung Hee, Im Ji Yoo, Shin Jae Min, An Hyun Jin and Liu Tan Ah. From Kure County, we have the teacher Yoon So Gu and leader Lee Ji Hyun, assistant leader Im Soo Young and members are Oon Bi. Ah, uh, Oon Bi is also assistant leader and members are Kwon Doo Ho, Kim Min Sung and Park Ji In. From Kuosong County, teacher is Park Myung Shin, leader is Yi Ji Min, and assistant leaders are Park Do Yeon, Yi Shin, and members are Ku Yoon Hae, Song Yoo Jung, Song Ji Ah, Choi Eun So, Choi Ye Dam, Choi So Eun, and Han Choi Yu. From Suncheon City, teacher is Gu Su and Yang Kyung Hee, and leader is Kim Ji Hu. Assistant leaders are Kim Ye Chan and Eun Ha Jun, and members are Yang Dong Eun, Ha Won Jae, Han Ye Seul, Park Jung Min, Kim Tae Yeon, Park Ye Eun. And from Gangyang City, we have teacher So Ji Hu, leader Oh Ha Young, assistant leader Yi Eun So, Yang Si Eun, and members Yi Su Min, Yi So Jin, Kang Byung Jun, Gong Ha Kyung, Jung Yul Bin, and So Young Eun. And from Yeosu City, which is last, we have teacher Park Suk Ki, and leader Choi Ji Woo, assistant leader Park Gon Hoo and Kim Sung Joo, and members Kim Min Kyul, Seo Jae Min, and Kwon Ye Lin. Many students are participating online, but we did not show their video link and we just share the names. We will now go on to the presentations. So our students really worked very hard in preparing for these presentations. So considering all of the efforts that the students have put in, it would have been best if all of the students could have been could have been here. But because of COVID-19, the number of uh, participants on site is limited, and so only a handful of the students from the from all of the teams were able to attend here. So we apologize for that situation. First, we will listen to the presentations by the local teams who prepared uh, presentations on net zero. There are a lot of teams that we have to uh, give opportunities to, so please limit your presentation to seven minutes. First, from Kure County, uh, they will be presenting on climate crisis response activities beginning from the school. So please come up on the stage and begin with your introduction. So please give the team a warm hand. Good morning. I am from the WPE. We protect the earth from Jeonnam Kure County, uh, Jeonnam Natural Science High School. And my name is Lee Ji Hyun. Today I will be presenting on climate crisis response activities beginning from school. For students like us, we spend half of our time in schools, and so actions that begin from school will contribute to net zero and overcoming the climate crisis. So that was the beginning of our activities, and this is the contents of my presentation. But I'd like to begin with a question. Do you know our county, Kure? So have you ever visited Kure Kun? And if you have, you would know that we are located near Mount Chiri and we have a lot of natural resources. And we have a lot of farming land. 80% of our residents are farmers. And uh, why do you think I'm mentioning this? Agriculture, unlike other industries, is directly linked to climate situation. And so climate uh, 
the, has great influence on the productivity of farming. And last year, because of flooding, uh, many of the farmers had to endure great damage. One degree of temperature rise is directly linked to the farming productivity. And so climate is a issue of survival for not just the farmers, but for all of us. So climate change is a issue that we are facing immediately, particularly for local communities like Kure, which is heavily dependent on farming. So because of climate change, we are have are experiencing a lot of damages, but we still have low level of awareness. And so we wanted to contribute to enhancing understanding of the importance of climate change. So our club name is WPE, we protect the earth. And we are already living in the climate crisis era. So we will continue on with actions that we can take immediately to try to address this problem. Next, I'd like to talk about why we needed to take action in schools. And we conducted a survey, and we discovered that there are three problems. The first is that we are excess using excessive air conditioning. So sometimes we would have the windows open even with the air conditioning on. And also in the empty classrooms, the air cons would still continue to run. The second problem was that the separation of trash was not being uh, conducted properly. Do you, you, what do you think is the amount of disposable plastics that we use every year? It's about three billion per year. But the problem is that they are not being separated and disposed properly. And so they are just sent to the landfill and particularly for plastics, if they are not properly uh, separated, they will just go to waste. And so every year, we see an increase in the total waste that is being uh, thrown away. And so under such circumstances, we realize that schools also have an important role to play in addressing this problem. The third problem was that there was a lack of understanding of the importance of climate change. Uh, do you know that we are in living in the midst of climate crisis right now? What do you think is the solution? And so we conducted a survey among the students and seven, eight respondents out of 10 did not know the answer. So we realized that we really have a low level of awareness. And so we realized that we need to engage in activities to enhance awareness of this problem. And so I will now talk about the specific activities that we engaged in in order to address these problems that we identified. The first is that we had a campaign to reduce the uh, use of air conditioning as well as uh, electricity. So when there are empty classrooms, we would ensure that the lights and the air conditioning are turned off. And even when we are using air conditioning, we maintain room temperature of 26 degrees. Although it may be a small action, uh, we believe that if we have sustainability in these activities, we can contribute to resolving the problem. The second campaign was uh, proper separation of trash in schools as well as uh, raising awareness of the importance of recycling resources. And so we produced a film which we showed to all of the students and uh, we also conducted um, several sessions teaching the students about sep proper separation of trash. And we also engaged in a campaign to reduce the amount of disposable goods that are used. And so because of these efforts, we are seeing that there has been an improvement in our recycling rate. The third campaign is an awareness campaign on the streets to increase understanding of climate crisis and net zero. So we came up with these banners and we would stand on the streets with these um, boards in, 
to and uh, shout to the passersby uh, on the importance of climate crisis and net zero. So the passersby were very much interested in this campaign that we were engaging in. Some people were asking us questions. And so in Kure Kun, this uh, campaign from our school was a great opportunity for enhancing the residents' awareness. This is an issue of a survival. We need to understand the importance of net zero in overcoming the climate crisis, but there are not that many people taking concrete actions. So now is the time for all of us to act. There is no second Earth. So thank you very much for your attention. And this is the end of my presentation. And we will show you a short film on the activities that we conducted at our school. I think we should do something to um, let people know about the severity of this pri problem, this crisis. Thank you very much. Yes, that was leader Lee ji from Kure County. Next is Kwang Yang. And the presentation title is One Step Towards Carbon Neutrality. So I would like to ask the presenter to please come up to the podium and introduce themselves. Good morning. We're from Kwangyong. My name is Wa Young. Uh, my name is Yeon Seo. And our talk is titled One Step Towards Carbon Neutrality. This is our table of contents. I would like to talk about definition and background be behind carbon neutrality. Next, I would like to talk about environmental problems in Kwangyong City and then talk about what we look like in terms of carbon and then talk about our proposal. First, definition and background. Regarding carbon neutrality, well, there are human activities, and we have the amount of carbon that is emitted, and then we have the carbon that is removed from the atmosphere. And if we make that zero, that's what we call net zero or carbon neutrality. And the background is, of course, because of the global warming, and we are experiencing abnormal weather, including extreme heat, snow, storms, and fires. And also in Korea, we have an industrial structure um, uh, focused on manufacturing and fossil fuel, and that is why uh, we see more trends of global warming in the last 30 years. And if the global warming or the temperature increase ex exceeds the, uh, the ability for Earth to hope, then we will be threatened and we will have more natural disasters. 
And if we can limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius, then uh, we can drastically reduce the threats to biodiversity, health, ecosystem, food security, human security, and economic growth. And if you look at Kwangyang, uh, we have the Kwangyang Bay, and there is a lot of um, cargo that moves here. And we also have the Kwangyang Steelworks, and we have industrial complexes here, and that is causing a lot of the carbon emissions. And next I would like to talk about what the youth think about the environmental problems in Kwangyang. So we have severe air pollution, the fine dust issue is quite serious, my throat hurts, my skin is not so good, and the water quality is not good. Next I would like to talk about what we look like when it comes to carbon emissions. First, we buy something every day and we order products to be delivered every day. Uh, that's the first one. And second, we buy a lot of food and put it, put them in the refrigerator. And number three, we use disposable cups for coffee and drinks. So we are emitting a lot of carbon. In order to reduce this, well, we need to act in terms of achieving carbon neutrality. This is what we need to do. First, before we buy a product, we have to think about whether I really need this. And second, uh, buy just a small amount of food and consume uh, in the same day. And third, we should carry on tumblers. And so these are uh, our proposals. First of all, we need to have environment uh, classes and lessons in our curriculum so that the adolescents can be interested in environmental issues. And we need to have the right uh, educational environment so that we can act uh, upon these important issues. And next, we have to create an acting community uh, and grow and uh, foster an environment so that the youth and the environment can grow together. And that was our presentation on One Step Towards Carbon Neutrality. Thank you. Yes, that was Kwangyang. Thank you, leaders of the Kwangyang team. Next, from Namhae County, we have the team Free Earth, who will be presenting on you, I, and us for carbon neutral. Please come up at the stage and begin with your presentation. Okay. You, I, and us for carbon neutral. Hello, we are Park Jong Min, Do Kyung Min from Changsun High School. Uh, we are from the club Free Earth and we will be beginning our presentation. This is the contents of our presentation. First is on the definition of carbon net zero. Second is the situation in Korea and in our locality. Third, actions for net zero and the expected effects. As for our actions, there, it's comprised of four specific actions. So it's divided into government, business, locality, and schools. First chapter is on the definition of net zero. As you can see here, the amount of emissions of carbon and the amount that is absorbed should be offset and made to zero. So the actual carbon emissions amount being zero is what we call net zero. Now I'd like to talk about the situation globally and in Korea. Uh, we are already experiencing climate change throughout the world. And as of 2015, many countries drafted or became members of the Paris Agreement and declared their commitment to limiting temperature rise to 1.5 degrees. And so this requires an entire global efforts. Next is policy for the government. First of all, 35% of the carbon emissions comes from buildings. And so to solve this problem in new buildings, we have to have a ZEB, mandatory ZEB, which is zero energy building system. So these uh, buildings can have a zero emissions when the proper uh, systems and technologies are introduced. So if you look at the characteristics of the ZEBs, you might think that they're very expensive to build, uh, but uh, 
and yes, it's a bit costly, and so we should begin with the major companies, and then uh, gradually spread to the smaller and medium-sized companies. So you will see the SK Eco Lab building of SK Chemical. I'd like to introduce to you the technology that was used in this building. First is high density uh, windows. So it leads to 44% energy res reduction and does a lower energy cost. And there is a, a geothermal heat pump system, uh, which is its active system. So they apply the principle that the ground temperature is constant throughout the year. And so this uh, principle is applied to ensure that energy consumption can be reduced throughout the year in these buildings. Next is policy for the companies. Uh, have, do you watch a lot of Netflix? In 2019, 15% of the global net work, network was used for viewing Netflix. Right now, because of COVID-19, a lot of time is spent indoors. And so now that proportion probably is much higher. So we want to have a separate uh, subscription uh, payment systems for downloading videos and uh, by introducing this new system we will be able to reduce the amount of energy that is used. Next is policies for the local communities. So we want to have mandatory use of biodegradable nets by 2050. As you can see on the graph, by 2021, or in April of 2021, 96% of the fishermen had uh, applied for biodegradable net uh, use. And so we are providing financial support for this transition, and we will be able to reach this goal. Next is policy for the schools. This is organizing the Green Scouts. So we want to encourage high school students to participate in these uh, environmental activities that are conducted by the Green Scouts. And this will contribute to enhancing awareness about the environmental problems. More specifically, we want to expand the Changsun High School Forest. And this is, of course, a program that began in our schools. We're hoping it will spread throughout the country. And our Changsun High School Forest, uh, in our forest, we select the fruit-bearing trees, and we plant them. And also, the activities are uploaded on the SNS. And we have we use these hashtags to encourage the spreading of these activities throughout the world. Next is slow fashion. So by encouraging the consumption of clothes that you can wear for a long time, we can reduce the amount of synthetic fibers that is used, and also we can encourage more eco-friendly resources like cashmere to be uh, consumed compared to other synthetic materials. And the second important aspect of this campaign is to share ideas on how to make your clothes last longer. So uh, application development is part of this uh, plan. And uh, th through the use of these apps, we can share different ideas on how to wear clothes for a longer duration of time. Next is our final expected effects of these activities. As by implementing the policies that have been mentioned to date, we hope to reduce the temperature rise or limit temperature rise to 1.5 degrees. That is all free Earth. This is a presentation by the Club of Free Earth of Changsun High School. Thank you very much. This has been Do Kyung Min and Park Jung Min. Yes, thank you. Yeosu Shi. Next is Yeosu. And the topic is carbon neutrality movement, youth rise up. Please come up to the stage and introduce yourself. Y 
youth should rise up for carbon neutrality movement. My name is Choi Ji Woo, and I will be giving this presentation by the Yosu team. In 1919 and also in 1929, we had anti Japanese movements, and in 1960, we had the April Revolution. And in 1980, we had the May 18th pro-democracy movement in Gwangju. In 1987, we had the June de Democratic Uprising. And what do these events have in common? Uh, the fact is that the youth rose up and changed the history of Korea. And as a result, we have what is called a Korean democracy. And we have uh, achieved miraculous economic development, and now we are one of the advanced nations. And so I believe that we, the youth, have to be in the lead when it comes to overcoming climate cri crisis as well. Climate change, climate crisis is a global issue, and Korean youth should rise up, and we should be in the lead in order to handle this problem. And. Of course, for all events, we have the cause, the result, and we also have solutions. And that is why I thought about the causes behind climate change. And I also will talk about what kind of solutions that we have. First, in terms of emissions of major greenhouse gases, we have the power generations using fossil fuel. And we also have the industry emitting a lot of CO2 and also uh, internal combustion engines. And so this is threatening humanity. And we are experiencing many fires. And also, many species can become extinct because of global warming. In order to overcome these issues, we have to all work together, individuals, countries, and also companies. And I would like to show some examples. First of all, in terms of energy. We need energy transition from fossil fuel to uh, renewables. Also, in the industrial sector, we have many industrial complexes emitting pollutants and also greenhouse gases. And we need to create a smart green industrial complex and make everything uh, eco-friendly. What can individuals do? Well, we can switch our cars to electric cars or hydrogen cars, and we can reduce the emission of greenhouse gases. Also, uh, we should get rid of the deforestation areas and uh, create healthy forests. So we need to act. However, I carried out a survey of 209 students, and we asked them about carbon neutrality. and. More than half of the students were well aware of the greenhouse gas issues and global warming. However, when it came to action, less students were active and actually doing something on a daily basis in order to deal with this problem. So we realized the seriousness of the issue. However, we just want to live convenient lives and we don't want to act because that inconveniences us. However, uh, we are faced with an emergency situation. It is not just at the warning stage or the crisis stage. And we have to rise up and we have to shout out. And our voices have to be heard at the National Assembly and in the international uh, stage as well. And we have to deliver our message. In the future, the world will be ours, not our previous generations. And we have to live in that new world. And so this is what we need to do right away. In the past, we tended to be indifferent to these issues, and we lacked or refused to participate. However, in the future, we will have to be more active in our participation. And many of you feel that that's cumbersome, it inconveniences us, or it is difficult. However, there are many actions that we can take quite easily. For example, we can use shopping bags, reusable ones, instead of plastic bags. And we can use handkerchiefs instead of paper towels. And also uh, use your uh, 
washing machine less frequently, and also having the right temperature indoors and using public transportation and planting trees, and also using electronic appliances with higher energy efficiency and unplugging the, them, and also uh, recycling better. And we can use uh, reusable cups and reduce food waste and use uh, less air conditioning. And so this is the civil movement that we want to talk about. I Here I talk about the carbon footprint and carbon hunters. And uh, what I mean by carbon hunters is to actually doing something in order to uh, reduce the amount of carbon emissions and uh, those who reduce carbon footprint. And so Many people feel fear and you feel defeatism, um, but that is not the atmosphere that we want. We want to have a message of hope and possibility and potential, and we need to believe that we can do something. We can become carbon hunters, and we need to move away from being passive like we were in the past, and we need to become active carbon hunters in the future. We will be at the center of the world in the future, and I propose that we rise up and act right now. And so, I hope that you will respond to my comment by saying, youth rise up. So carbon neutrality movement, youth rise up, rise up, rise up. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Next, we have the youth team from Posong County who will be giving a presentation on net zero action plans at city level. So please come up on the stage for your presentation. Hello. Good morning. We are from Polgyo High School. I am Lee Jimin, Imushin, and Park So Hyun. I'd like to talk about why we need to have a net zero and the policies in Korea for net zero and the actions that we should take in the future. As you know very well, net zero is when we reduce the emissions of carbon and increase absorption of carbon, thus making the net emission level of carbon zero. So globally, uh, we have, are faced with serious climate change or global warming, and there's a lot of forest fire, heat waves, cold waves, glaciers melting, and many other natural disasters worsening. And to the high school students, we conducted a survey to see that 93% of the respondents say that they understand the severity of the problem. As for net zero, only 6% said they know what this is very well. 32% said they have heard about it. And the remaining 62% said they've never heard about net zero. And as for how they came to know about net zero, school uh, education was 42%. And so, we realized that we need to expand the training and education on net zero in schools. And next, we'd like to talk about the actions in Korea for net zero. There's a Paris Agreement, and there was the issuance of IPCC 1.5 degrees special report, as well as 2050 Korea net zero declaration. And the Paris Agreement was reached in 2015 at COP21. And Greenpeace had reported the effects of Paris 2015. First is that the uh, extreme weather patterns will be eased. Secondly, we will be able to form a society where energy is safely used. And third is job creation and a new growth engine. 
at IPCC, 1.5 degree special report uh, was issued, and Korea declared uh, net zero by 2050. And this policy is comprised of low carbon for economic structure and forming low carbon ecosystems and other efforts. As for actions and solutions for net zero, it can be divided into the nation and the individual. For the state, for the nation, we could have an emissions trading system in place and expand the renewable energy use. For individuals, they can use public transportation and reduce disposable goods. And we could have, for our school, we did a separation, uh, trash separation system. And for Bosong counties, we did monitoring, environmental monitoring system establishment, and we also establish uh, solar PV LED lights, lighting systems, and we also produced um, shopping, reusable shopping bags. And uh, so when we compare, when before we take action and after we take action, when we do take these actions, we will see the benefits of GHG uh, emissions reduction, stable ecosystem, and uh, the higher absorption of carbon. We can also delay the glacial period and have stable climate. But if we don't take any action, we will continue to, this, to see the rise in natural disasters, water and food shortage, sea level rise, and uh, the extinction of uh, species and desertification and more wildfires. And so if we don't take any action and climate change worsens, there will be no future for future generations. So we need to begin to take action to right now to ensure that we can ensure that global temperature will go back to normal and we can reduce carbon emissions. So this has been Polgyo Han Jidong of Polgyo High School. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, thank you very much. So five teams present, presented under the theme carbon neutrality. So our students, I'm sure they did a lot of studying to prepare for the presentations. Next, we will hear presentations on energy transition. The first presentation under this theme will be from Ko Sung and the title of the presentation will be Changes in Perception of Energy Saving. So please come up to the stage and introduce yourself. Good morning. I'm from Chulsung High School. I am a member of the Ecology and Environment Research Club. My name is Chong Seung Gwan, and I would like to give a presentation under the topic changes in perception of energy saving. So these are my key topics. First, I would like to talk about climate crisis, and then talk about our response, and then talk about uh, policies in our region. So. First of all, uh, many species are disappearing because of the climate change and uh, there are many natural disasters. And also we have new viruses and I believe that COVID-19 is not unrelated to the climate change and climate threat. And there are damages to the environment, property and lives. And many people are asking the government to become more active in dealing with these issues. And in October of 2020, uh, President Moon Jae-in has declared carbon neutrality by 2050. And also many laws have been passed in the National Assembly to uh, address to this. And these can be our responses. We need to provide uh, more information and also uh, increase awareness and actually reduce carbon. And this slide, of course, uh, explains carbon neutrality. And we also uh, use the term net zero. And why do we need to uh, implement carbon neutrality? Well, for the following reasons. Uh, we must not cross the 400 ppm CO2 level. Uh, and also, 
we have increased in the emission of greenhouse gases in Korea compared to 1990. And also, uh, the production of apple pears in Jeonnam area reduced by 60%, and we are producing more subtropical uh, crops. And also, because of the temperature increase, we are seeing new infectious diseases, and many uh, diseases, uh, and many natural disasters are occurring because of climate change. And so these are some of the policies of Kosan County. And you can see that we are working on reducing emission gases from the cars. And we are also creating indoor gar gardens. And also we're trying to uh, have a zero waste challenge. And we're trying to reduce microplastics and so forth. However, as we prepared for this youth forum, uh, the, this was information that we found out by asking the uh, the Kosan County, and we we actually had to ask around for this information. And if you are a member of the general public not interested in the issue, there is no way of knowing that such campaigns are going on. So what should we do? What should our role be? And uh, we found out that only students who are working in our club were interested. And uh, I wanted to increase the temperature on the air conditioner, but many people, uh, many students complained. And also when we wanted more vegetarian meals in the cafeteria, most students uh, protested to that. And so regarding climate crisis and carbon neutrality, we have to change the mindset of our students. And so we need to have campaigns, but also we need to have mandatory classes in our curricula. And we need to have mandatory, a certain number of mandatory classes or hours that the students need to take so that they will uh, become more aware of this issue. And we also need to provide specific action items so that the students can practice this in their daily lives. So after changing our awareness and mindset, then uh, we can come up with specific measures. And so uh, we should download rather than doing streaming and also uh, deleting email that we do not need. And we so we can also we can use green products and reduce the our showering time by just one minute using water saving shower heads, turning down lights and using energy efficient uh, lamps and also uh, cleaning the filter of our air conditioners, unplugging our appliances, uh, using bicycles or walking, and not creating food waste, using reusable cups, and so forth. Also, we need to develop science and technology. So energy dieting uh, technology would be one example of technology that we need to uh, introduce and develop. And also, we need to have more environmentally friendly uh, transport systems. And we need to have more recycle bins and also provide uh, eco-friendly eco bags. And these are some projects that we can carry out in collaboration with Kosong County. And uh, if we look at our current uh, environmental education, I believe there is no future for us. And I believe that students have to change first in order to change our future course. Thank you. So we will have to take 30 seconds to um, for technical check. Thank you. Next, we have from Suncheon City, who will give a presentation on carbon neutral life, our local energy plan, and our ideas. Unfortunately, they were not able to attend 
uh, in person, but they have prepared a video for us. So let us watch together. Hello. We are waiting from Suncheon City. Uh, it's unfortunate that we are not able to attend on site, but we are learning a lot uh, by attending the program online. So thank you very much. Hello. We are waiting, and we will be presenting on Net Zero Life, our local energy plans, and our thoughts. I am Kim Ye Chan. And so our team would like to present on ways to reduce energy consumption and the need to uh, reduce the use of fossil fuel and to transition to new and renewable energies. And I'd like to talk specifically about the plans that our city, Suncheon, has with regards to energy transition. First of all, I'd like to talk about net zero and renewable energy. Second, characteristics of our locality. Third is our current state. And the fourth is future plans and our ideas. First of all, it all begins with net zero. And so I'd like to begin with a concept of net zero and renewables energy. So net zero is when the total amount of GHG emissions is offset by total absorption of carbon. And so there is no net uh, carbon that is emitted. And so this is why it's called net zero or carbon neutrality. New and renewable energy refers to replacing the fossil fuels with the natural resources, uh, energy from the sun, water, the rivers, and biomass. And also, uh, it includes new energy such as fuel cells, hydrogen, solar PV, solar heat, bio, wind, and water energies. Hello. I will be talking about the second part. I am Moon Ha Jun. I'd like to talk about the characteristics and the energy plan of our city, Suncheon. We are located in the southwestern part of the country. We have mountains, uh, rivers, lakes, and the uh, sea around us. And we have a moderate uh, temperature as well as a lot high precipitation. And we are known to be a city of culture and tourism. And we are an ecological city with the Suncheon Bay wetlands and uh, Suncheon Bay National Garden. And this is our landmark, Suncheon Bay. And this is designated as an ecological protection area. And to protect the migratory birds that visit the wetlands here, the electric pole lines have been buried underground. And we have 900,000 pyong of barley field being clustered as a the habitat for the migratory birds. And in 2012, we participated in the uh, nuclear energy reduction plan for cities. And we had the energy ordinance established in 2014. And in 2015, we conducted the energy transition workshop for citizens. And the first year, first plan is from 2015 to 2020. We successfully completed this energy plan. And right now, we are in the 2021 to 2025 planning phase. And we have introduced electric buses in our city. Next are some photos from the 2015 Citizen Workshop. I am Kim ji -hoo. I will be in charge of the third part of the presentation. As you just heard, our city is working hard for net zero energy transition and climate change response. And uh, every year, we have a project to establish um, measurement equipments and also su provide support for hydrogen vehicle and other eco-friendly vehicles. And also LPG transition support is being provided uh, throughout the city. And so as of 2020, our city uh, energy consumption rose by 14% vis-a-vis 2015. Industry takes up 34%, general 50%, farming 13%, housing 8%, and uh, others minus 50%. And we have the Suncheon Bay Area National Garden, which is our landmark. And we installed the solar PV power plants here. 
and we were able to receive uh, it was well received by the citizens and the tourists to our city and on the left you will see increase in our new and renewable energy uh, portfolio now i'd like to also talk about our energy if uh, self-sufficient towns and you will see that our 2020 energy self-sufficiency goal is 10 percent which we attain and we also are forming more energy self-sufficient towns but at the same time trying to protect the ecosystems minimize damages to nature and to allow coexistence between uh, nature and people and in preparing for this presentation we realized that there are some things that need to be improved for example there's not much information available for the youth and uh, so it would be best if these kinds of information would be provided through SNS and other new platforms that is often used by the youth and also we need to have more time invested to learn about the net zero initiatives and we heard that we have the Suncheon Bay Area Energy Self-Sufficient Town uh, Promotion Center and but unfortunately we had not heard about this uh, promotion center prior to preparing for this presentation and so maybe it's because the center is not doing a very good job but anyhow it needs to exert more effort to promote its activities also to uh, promote this um, self-sufficient town program of the city more throughout uh, the country. And we hope that there will be more lectures and events like these on net zero and energy transition so that uh, the term net zero becomes a part of our daily lives. So this is the end of our presentation. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for that presentation. So Kosong and Suncheon gave presentations on energy transition. Thank you very much. Next, there will be some presentations on community activity and actual cases. So first, we will hear from Jinju. And the title of their presentation is Action Plan for Environmental Movement in Local Life. Please come up to the podium and introduce yourself. Uh, uh. Good morning. I am from Jinju. Uh, our team is Friends of the Earth together with your peers, and I am the leader of this team, Kim Dongju. I would like to talk about the environmental issues in our daily lives and I want to discuss what we can actually do in our daily lives and this is my table of contents. So first of all, how uh, the, the actual status of the environmental issues in our uh, local community and also talk about what kind of plans that we can have and talk about actual practices and also uh, I would like to talk about our commitment in terms of implementing these action plans. So first of all, the current status of environmental issues in our community. And so we were able to find many cases and we, I also want to focus on the bamboo forest in Mangyongdong. Uh, yes, there are some technical issues with the slides. But anyhow, uh, Jinju City had a project in mind to cut down the bamboo forest and to develop the area and put some performing stages and so forth. So uh, the project was cancelled, but when we looked into the project, we found out that yes, actually there were plans uh, to cut down the forest. Uh, but we were unaware of this issue. But I think it is important that we pay attention to these issues. 
and also we carried out a survey of 150 adolescents. And the results were quite surprising. So the first question, do you, I know how to protect the environment? Well, 97% of the students said that, yes, I know how. Uh, and the next question, I am interested in the environment in my daily life. And 70% of the students said that they were not interested on a daily basis. The microphone is off.
하나, 둘, 셋. 네, 잠시 음향 관계로 네, 오시는 대로 바로 시작하도록 하겠습니다. We will begin uh, once the participants come back inside the hall. We had a short break for a technical check. 자, 밖에 계시는 학생들과 would like to invite the students and teachers who are outside to please come inside. We have uh, resolved the technical issue, so we will be resuming. 자, 진주시 오늘 한번더 발표하는 영광을 맡게. So again, Jinju City will be giving the presentation from the beginning. So we will. Or rather, we will continue with the um, presentation. Uh, 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 <laughs> yes, I would like to resume my presentation. My name is Kim Dongju. Yes, so I would like to just continue. So we did a survey, and 97% of the students answered that they know how to protect the environment. However, 70% of the students uh, say that they are indifferent to to protecting the environment on a daily basis. And 50% of the students said that they did not know what carbon neutrality is. And so we were able to draw the following conclusions. We have many people who know, who have the knowledge. However, uh, many of the students were not engaged in action. So what can we do in the local community? First of all, we established our goal. And so we need to enhance awareness and also we need to form a environmental community that is sustainable. And we were engaged in many specific activities that you see on the screen. And I would like to share some cases. So first is the Metabus and Vlog. Now on the Metabus, we can share our awareness about the environment, and also we can share information on vlog activities, and also we can participate in local activities and local movements. We have the Mount Chiri Green Walks, and so uh, we have numerous programs such as meeting fireflies in the forest, and also uh, taking walks uh, and becoming one with humans and nature and also uh, we read the book by author Kim Young-hoon regarding the blue whale that consumed uh, plastic bags and we had discussions on this and also uh, we can introduce numerous environmental issues to our adolescents and these are things that we can do as individuals. First is implementing flogging. Now, flogging is not a difficult term. Flogging, plogging, plogging means jogging or walking in our daily lives. And next is to collect garbage in our neighborhood. And also, we can use tumblers or actually engage in recycling. And these are uh, very good ideas. Next is to use carbon point uh, programs. And this is a point program that is implemented by Jinju City. And this uh, can be utilized in industrial sites. And if you can reduce the amount of carbon, then you get points for that. And uh, apartment complexes do this for water consumption reduction and electricity uh, use reduction. And we can do the same for uh, carbon reduction as well. And uh, the fourth one is to use more electronic uh, electric buses. And currently, we have 12 such buses and one, bus number 120 and 130 are the electric buses, and they have many advantages. Um, we have, we can see that the emissions level is quite low compared to buses, the existing ones that use uh, light diesel or LNG. 
and uh, we can provide a very uh, pleasant environment within the bus. And some citizens, well, I, I hope that you will uh, wait for these environmentally friendly buses, even though you have to wait a few more minutes in the bus stops. And this is uh, a picture of the eco-friendly bus that I just talked about. And so I believe that students are already aware of ways to protect the environment, but they lack interest. And so that is why we need to motivate them, because they already know how to protect the environment. We have to teach them how to implement, how to act. And so we are faced with the pandemic. We also have the economic crisis, and we have environmental issues. So we have to overcome all these issues and create a sustainable uh, future. And that is why it is now time for us to act. We at the youth have to act. And by doing that, we need to create a sustainable environmental movement. And I think it is a good idea for us to be sharing all this information together. And we need to carry around handkerchiefs and also uh, tumblers. And I would like to end my presentation by showing you some pictures of our activities. Thank you. Thank you very much for the Jinju presentation. It was a good job. Next, we'd like to invite the youth team from Hadong County. On the presentation is on the Net Zero Town in Hadong. So please come up on the stage for your presentation. Good morning. We are G2G Grade 2 Green from Hadong Girls High School and Hadong Middle School. I am Ko Jiu and Ho Yea. Right now, globally, because of global warming, we are seeing more abnormal weather patterns leading to a lot of damages. And to fight such trends, net zero is one of the actions taken by many different towns. So we'd like to introduce to you the net zero efforts of Hadong. So we will begin with the definition of a net zero town. Second, I'd like to talk about the current state and future plans for this program. Third is our promotion activities, ideas for promoting this program, as well as our own actions and efforts. First of all, what is a net zero town? And it is a town that does not emit any carbon. So the, with the increase in environmental protection and responding to climate change, our Hadong has been uh, implementing the net zero town program as part of our contribution. So how can these towns be selected? We look at the spatial, locational commitment, the attractiveness, environmental, social aspects of the town in the selection of the net zero towns. Now I'd like to talk about our current state. Uh, we The process is divided into three phases. In 2015, in first phase, we had Mokdong, Iksan, Dancheon, Bomwang, and Osong towns designated. And in 2019, the second phase, we had Puchon and Yongshim towns. In the third phase, we had Gumnam, Mege, Jungi, and Cheongak towns designated as the net zero town. So through this process, we were able to form a net zero belt in our city. Next is our joint implementation, the achievements and future implementation plans. So the in Gyeongsangnam-do province, we formed a council on this uh, net zero town operations. And we also selected and designated various net zero towns. And we had a, a commemorative ceremony as for 2018. We had the image event for this program. And in 2019, 
19 and 2020, the towns that were designated then, then they are still in the process of being developed. Would like to share with you some case examples. The first town designated is Moktong Town, was designated as the first inland net zero town, and it uses various small hydro solar PV power generation plants. The second example is Uishin Town, and it was designated in 2017. It opened a clean air can factory, and many uh, new and renewable energy plants have been established. And it, to, we are working to make this town an ecological tourism site, and we have uh, formed the observation facility. And this effort is not limited to the town itself. We've also uh, building a lot of lodging facilities for outside visitors to come. And now our efforts to promote the net zero towns. Among the seven criteria that we are using for the selection, four of them are related to tourism industry. So do you think this is a very good criteria? We had to review the criteria from uh, scratch. So we asked the residents what this town or what are you doing in order to contribute to net zero? And we realized from their answers that the efforts for net zero is still insufficient in our town. And so the city government realized that, that in order to fulfill its vision to become uh, e economically independent through the net zero programs, they need to have better policies implemented. So now we'd like to share with you our ideas on how to promote this program. First is the change in the basic lifestyle of our residents, reducing the amount of use of disposables, increasing use of renewable energy, also reducing the consumption of meat, for example, eating soy meat instead of beef, and also minimizing the use of surfactants in uh, shampoos or other soaps, and also establishing a, a joint gar garden as well as so-called new owner shops. So this is an example of a new owner shop. All of the products that the residents are not using but is still can be used are collected in this new owner shop. And then they are st stay there for two months until a new owner comes and uses them. And also we have a wish list corner where people can jot down items or equipments that they need to use in the future. And another example uh, of a program in these net zero town is that there is a joint use electric vehicle or electric cart, but this is not being utilized that well. And so we propose to use a time reservation system for more efficient operation. Next is a, a town stay program where other residents can come and directly experience the net zero town. So as you can see here, the re those who stay in the lodging facilities who bring the items on the wish list can be given additional incentives. And last but not least, would like to talk about our activities at our club. Next, we will be featuring you a short video which shows the different activities that we are engaging in at our club. Next, we'd like to talk about zero waste items that can be shared among different people. And so we conducted an interview of the, partic of the participants to this program. And so we had asked, did you receive any zero waste gifts or items as gifts? And uh, many of the respondents said that they are very much interested in continuing to use these net zero items. 
and please refer to our presentation materials for more details about this program. We G2G will be working until this net zero becomes part of our daily life practice. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, thank you very much for your presentation. Next is Ko Hung, and their topic is problems on ocean with climate change. I would like to ask the presenters to come up to the stage and introduce yourselves. Good morning. My name is Kim eun -ji, and my name is Che no We're from My Face Like Yuza team, and our title is Problems on Ocean with Climate Change. This is our table of contents. I would like to talk about the uh, problems on ocean within this region in the world, and then talk about what we're doing to enhance our awareness level, and talk about what we need to do. So first of all, marine issues in the region. I list three things. First of all, we have high uh, water temperature leading to many deaths of fish. And second is the uh, overpopulation of Aurelia aurita, which is a type of jellyfish. And the third uh, problem is the red tide because of high temperature. First, I would like to talk about the high water temperature leading to death of many fish. And here, uh, because of the high water temperature, 160,000 flatfish died. And also, we had 3.048 million organisms died in 102 fish farms, including abalone, fish, oysters, and scallops. And this is the next issue, which is the Aurelia aurita, which is a type of jellyfish, and the diameter is about 15 centimeters, and the tentacles are 2 to 3 centimeters long, and they live in groups, and the, the jellyfish can actually hurt uh, the fishing industry. And because the jellyfish destroy the aquaculture farms, it can hurt the fishing industry. And uh, there were some cutters and uh, nets that were placed on uh, cleaning ships and guiding ships. And as a result, 296 tons of the jellyfish were destroyed from, uh, from July 22nd to August 7th. This is the red tide, and this affects the near coast area, and often we have red tide when there is uh, not much current in the waters. Uh, this can turn the water very viscous, and this can actually cause the fish to suffocate. Next, I would like to talk about marine issues in the world. First is the bleaching of the Great Barrier Reef issue, and the second would be the death of many fish in the Biscayne Bay, and the third will be the decreased species in Korean waters. Uh, this is the bleaching that I talked about. This is a result of the high water temperature because of the greenhouse gases increase. and. You can see that the bleaching issue is quite serious uh, uh, in the red dot areas and less so in the green dot area. And you can see how the coral leaves are affected on the picture on the right. Next, I would like to talk about the death of many fish in the Buscane Bay. Uh, this is due to the high water temperature, uh, which led to the death of many flatfish. Uh, this is the increase of the marine organisms in the Korean waters. You can see that there was a 64% increase of the water species from year 2006 to year 2014, because now we have 7,919 species instead of the previous 9,000. 
uh, for uh, previous 4,906. Uh, next, we did a survey in order to learn about our current awareness level. And uh, I would like to talk about four things here. We have the survey, the forests, and also the efforts of the uh, Korea Coastal Guard and the development of new technology. So first, some slides on the survey. Do you think that cri climate crisis is a serious issue? Well, 89.1% said yes, and 10.9% of the students said no. And the reason for their answers was that they saw videos regarding climate change uh, in school or at home, but they felt that the issues are not that serious. And they said, when the earth becomes unlivable, I will be dead already, so it doesn't matter. And this is the next question. Do you believe that our region, our neighborhood, is also affected by climate change? And here, the answer was rather half and half, because 56.5% said yes, and 43.5% said no. Uh, and the people who said yes, they said that it is not snowing as much in the winter. Uh, and even the people who answered yes, they could not give specific reasons or examples. And the people who said no, they just said, well, I'm not sure. I don't really feel that this is a real issue. So we need to work harder in the future. And so we have many farms and also fish farms in our region. And we have many paste, much paste, waste coming from the livestock farms. And we need to beef up the processing facilities for the waste. And we also have to work on the uh, jellyfish overpopulation issue as well. Also, we can instruct, uh, we can construct the multi-purpose dams for water quality management, and we can carry out monitoring for the uh, water quality and strengthen our emissions tolerance level. And also, we can establish management committees for ocean waste. And also, we can work with the UNEP. So we will take measures so that these measures can be implemented. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention. Next, we'd like to invite Sacheon City Youth Team for their presentation on Sacheon, a sustainable city. Let's make it together. Please come up on the stage for your presentation. So our Sacheon team arrived a little bit late. So it's going to take uh, some time for them to get organized before they begin the presentation. Uh, uh. Good morning. Hello, we are from Sacheon Middle School. We are SES, Sacheon Eco Science. I am the leader, Ho Jin Hyuk, and I am Kwon Do Yoon and Jung Ji Hoon. So today, we'd like to share with you the activities of our club and the Sacheon City's uh, net zero policy and our proposals for a sustainable city and also our uh, scenario for net zero cities. We will begin with an introduction of our club. SES of Sacheon Middle School is a club of students, 25 students interested in environment and science. And our teacher also is the most capable and most beautiful teacher at Sacheon Middle School. These are our major activities. Every Wednesday during lunch, we conduct a no uh, food waste program 
or campaign, and we conduct a contest among the different classes. And this has led to a reduction in the overall food waste in our school. And we have the Hachon River monitoring activity that we conduct, as well as the water purification activities. And also on Saturday, the first Saturday of every month, we conduct the Apple Diet Campaign, which is a campaign to reduce the use of plastics. And the visitors to our booth uh, uh, show positive responses to our campaign. And we had the Guangpo Bay area, and we are engaging in various promotional activities for the preservation and conservation of Guangpo Bay, such as uh, producing and sending out uh, leaflets on the bay and also ecological exploration of this region. Next, we also visit the Waltengdo Island uh, uh, for the library environment management activities and also on important days like day of environment or earth or energy we conduct campaigns on the streets to raise awareness next kwon do yun will talk about sachan city's net zero policy i will now talk about the net zero policy of our city and we met with the officer in charge of the environment in Sacheon City, and we heard that the city has smart and renewable energy program, the ICE um, transition program, and the fine dust forest formation programs. So. These are the specific projects that the city is pursuing, and the results and the expected effects of these programs are as follows. So you will see that there's been an increase in smart and new and renewable energy ratio, and there's been more eco-friendly cars introduced, as well as reduction in fine dust. And also, through cooperation with the citizens and the local governments, we were able to see much positive result. And we conducted a survey among the citizens on their level of awareness. And we asked them, are you aware of the net zero policy of the city? And 3% said we know it, 42% said we don't know it very well, and 53% said they are not aware at all. And also with regards to the fine dust forest or eco-friendly cars and other policies, we realize the need to have more promotional activities. So overall, the response was positive in that they needed to have more promotional activities to raise awareness. So we realized that many of the residents still were not aware of the specifics of the net zero policy, and thus the city should exert more efforts to uh, have promotional campaigns and awareness raising campaigns. So these are our suggestions on how to promote the policies more. First of all, we realize that there are issues with the uh, PR activities of the city. There were still many residents who were not aware of the existence of these policies. And so we realized that, first of all, we should begin with awareness raising programs. So using SNSs or other media, there has to be more promotional activities and events on the net zero policy of the city. So that is our first proposal. And environment related application can be developed in order to track carbon footprint and uh, disseminate information about separation of waste and others. So we're going to have various environmental campaigns throughout the city and also active participation by the residents will be necessary. Next, I will talk about our school's net zero scenario. Uh, in order to draw out participation from the students and the residents, we will have to conduct uh, regular events in order to draw out such efforts on the part of our students. First of all, 
the use of a centralized system for cooling and heating systems. In our school, we had the cooling and the heating equipments controlled for each classroom, and so we're going. We should transition to a centralized control system for efficient management. Secondly, we will have to operate an environment protection group or team. So this uh, monitoring team will be in charge of various environmental uh, protection activities. Third is designating a carbon-free day, so encouraging students and the staff at the school to use public transportation to reduce or not use disposable goods or to reduce food waste on this specific day. Last but not least, we need to have continuous education on the environment. So we could have a day uh, set in a week uh, for education or classes on environmental issues. And we could have environmental quiz time, environmental ECCs, and other interesting events in order to raise awareness on the environment, environmental issues. So this is the end of our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, thank you very much. Jinju Hadong. So Jinju Hadong, Kohum Sachon teams uh, gave presentations focusing on community activities and real cases. Next, we will have presentations of overseas UEA member cities and they are participating by video. So there will be videos from Phnom Penh, Cambodia, and Cameroon of Bamenda. So in the video of Phnom Penh, we can see that youth are working with leaders in order to protect the environment. So we have youth activists and also Buddhist monks who are working on enhancing awareness. And so let's take a look at the video. ព្រះព្រោះកាស់ទៀតគឺជារឿងមួយដែលកំពុងទៅកើតមានឡើងនៅក្នុងសកលលោកគ្រោះមហន្តរាយជាច្រើនសិទ្ធសង្ឃតែ
นรูมาหันไรเซ็งเซ็งเการล้างมาเลิกพวกแผงใดแต่น้องเงี้ยมชีอยู่บิชนเข้มส้มเอาอยู่บิชนแต่เนาะนั่งขมาขมาไรเช่ดำน้ำเชื้อนึกทุ่มเวนสระนึกเช่ดำน้ำเชื้อนึกตีตีวิลล์ทอมุ้ยแต่อาจว่าอาเมนติสเพียบล้ออาบหนังบุญหนังช่วยกันมันทอยร่วมหันไรเงี้ยนี่เตี้ยเจ้ามุ้ยนังเกิดคำปรงไพรบอรีรัฐบาลกัมพูชีนังก้าวไปวัดนังไก่ลมอติกรงอัลเมียนสปอร์ตเพียบสระของโปรงนังปาร์ทานประกอบโดยพาสุขเพียบปัจจุบันนี้ยุบจนนังสหกุมกบาลกัมพูชีรวมจำนายอย่างพกพลน้องสกัมพีไทยรัฐาปาร์ทานติกรงตามระยะการพลัดดูพลัดนัดรูดเนื้อเจ้ามุ้ยปาร์ทานสะอาดกาโจรวมสกัมพีบริสมรามกาไก่ชนายนังปราบปราบผลพอลทอมจิตการกัดบนทอยการปราบประทองพลาสติกหนึ่งกำเพียบเนียบเซติสดำไปประทานอ้อหนึ่งตีกรองสะอาดเมนต์ออฟคีย์แอนด์เบอร์เมนต์อัสเปกต์ออบเซิร์ฟด์บายเดอะสตูเดนต์อัศจรรย์เพียงของอินคลูชันในแอนเบอร์เมนต์อเว
This is Sama, a 24-year postgraduate student from the University of Bamenda who is engaged in the protection of his environment. He stands to say, I am a youth. I love to protect and cater for my environment. On the behalf of the Bamenda City, on the behalf of all the youth who are engaged in this program, we, we, we call on you all to participate fully in the protection for your, of your environment in order to create sustainable future for the generation of tomorrow. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. So the message from Bamenda emphasized the importance of environmental protection for the future generation. And they have a very ambitious plan of giving environment-related education to 200,000 people in the coming decade. Next, we will have a discussion session. And Mr. Cho and Mr. Chung will come up to the stage and preside over the discussion. So during discussion, we will be looking at the Yosu Declaration, and we have prepared a draft, and we would like to revise uh, the draft. If you have opinions on the draft, and our chairperson will now be moderating the discussion. Yes, so we have been together for almost two hours, and we have been uh, pulling our wisdom together. And when it comes to handling the climate crisis issue, well, I believe that uh, Korea was a bit slow. However, I think now the southern coastal areas of Korea can be in the lead. And you have worked hard for this issue. So already we are witnessing a miracle. So let's give a big round of applause for all of us. And as was announced before, we have the UEA Yosu Declaration for Achieving Net Zero. And this has been circulated ahead of time, and I'm sure you have read the draft. And we would like to hear what you think about this draft. So are there any comments on the draft? Yes. Please stand up and introduce yourself. Good morning. I am from Tursong High School in Gosong. My name is Jung Seung Gwan. And if you look at the draft paragraph, uh, let's take a look at the last sentence. So we should receive appropriate cri climate crisis education, and we want to receive uh, accurate information regarding the environment. But I think that the wording is a bit vague. I hope that we can change the wording so that the environmental related education can be part of the uh, school curriculum so that we can receive more appropriate and systematic education on the environment. So get rid of the word appropriate, and what should the wording be? Well, yes, we should get rid of that word and then say that the through the school curriculum, we want to receive systematic and appropriate uh, education on the environment. So any other opinions on this comment? Yes, we agree. Okay, uh, please make a note of that. Any other suggestions? Hello, I am Kim Jung-gun, teacher at Daeha High School from Jinju. 
and I agree fully with what the student has suggested because the word curriculum, part of curriculum will be very important. So again, that word appropriate, rather than that, I think it's important to ensure that the um, education will be provided through the school curriculum. And there's the part which says the opinion of the youth. I'd like to include the term democratically reflect reflect in a democratic manner the opinions of the youth uh, in that sentence. So democratically and actively reflect the ideas and opinions of the youth. That is the wording that you suggested. Okay. Any other suggestion? Any other ideas? So can we have a real-time uh, adjustment of the wording right now on the screen? Is it possible? So have you, our rapporteur will be reading the new wording for us and then we will adopt the draft. Hello, it's nice to meet you. From Kosong Chalsang High School, the suggestion was to provide the environment or uh, climate education th systematically through the school curriculum. And from Jinju High School, the suggestion was democratically and actively reflect the opinions of the youth. So we will make sure to include those two wordings. And for the uh, up part, to the top part of the draft, well, I will read it again. We request the democratic and active reflection of the opinions of the youth and through school curriculum, systematic uh, education on environment and the climate and information should be delivered to the youth. So that will be the new wording. Thank you. Yes, at the youth forum, we will be suggesting those new wordings for the Yasu Declaration, and we will uh, send our ideas to the Secretariat. This youth forum is indeed very important and significant, and I was able to see for myself its importance through our forum. As you know, the South Coastal and South Central regions uh, is uh, trying to co-host the COP28 meeting in 2023. The COP, Conference of the Parties, is the most important event globally with regards to um, the environmental issues or climate issues. So threats, destruction, and failures. That Those are the words that we are hearing often, but despite the situation, it's very, very important that people like you, the younger generation, really come to the fore to take concrete actions. And so the Korea Carbon uh, Hunters Associations and uh, us, we will be collaborating for to introduce a new system. So we could have uh, junior uh, carbon hunters in schools or a Green Scout uh, clubs uh, operated in the schools to ensure that this momentum will spread throughout the country and throughout the world also. After this youth forum, we will have our teachers come together to discuss the details. Do you agree to the suggestion? Yes, thank you. So we'd like to ask our chair and the manager to stay up on the stage. Next, we have the highlight of today's forum, which is the photo session. So we'd like to invite all of the participants to come up on the stage. Please wear your masks, and we will take the group photo. First, we will have the youth forum backdrop. And then the second photo, we will take uh, that second photo with the online participants. So all of the participants, please come up on the stage.
네, 빨리 앞으로 나와 주시기 바랍니다. So please come up on the stage quickly for the photo. Miss Korea, so please face the camera. Please face the camera and make sure that your face can be seen. 올라가세요. 우리 학생들이 이쪽으로 내려오세요. 네. 자, 얘기 한번 봐주시기 바랍니다. 자, 우리 뒤에 키가 적으신 분들이 우리 뒤에 학생 맨 뒤에 세 분. So we are making some uh, adjustments in the position. 자 우리 자 피켓 뜨신 분들 자 앞사람 사이로 이렇게 해서 주세요. 좀더 이쪽으로 나오세요. Those of you uh, holding up signs, make sure that your signs can be seen. Yes, move to the right a little bit. Yes, thank you. So put your hands down in a very natural way and look uh, at me. Now we'd like to take the photo with all of the online participants also. So please wave your hand. The online participants, please wave your hand. If you're an online participant, please wave your hand as we take the photo. And please make a heart. Please make a heart with your hand. Thank you very much. As for the photos for the different teams, you can take photos later on separately. Again, in the interest of time for the forum, please take your individual photos later on. Please take your seats. I'd like to thank all of the students and the teachers who worked hard for the presentations at this youth forum. With this, we will conclude the youth forum. Thank you very much. Next, we will have the UEA Secretariat uh, make some announcements about the future programs for the day. Anyone from the UEA Secretariat for the announcements? Yeah, 이제 마쳤으니까요. 단체.